I'm here with Julian Dobbs, and we are at the Dyson Convention of the Diocese of the Living Word. We're having this just outside of Philly uh, this week, and I see a full uh, bit of people in the pews. It seems to be a very successful meeting. How do you think it's going so far? Firstly, Kevin, it's great to see you. Thank you, uh, thank you for all the work you do uh, for, uh, I, I was going to say promoting Anglican things, but actually you promote the gospel. Mm -hmm. Um, in the context of what's happening in the Anglican world and um, really grateful for your ministry as are many in this diocese. I think it's going really well here. Uh, we're uh, on day two of um, the Missions Conference and Synod, um, 43 congregations together. Um, uh, they're all represented here at the Synod. Um, and we're, we're just ordinary people getting on with the work of Jesus in the context in which we find ourselves. So uh, I'm very honored to be part of it all. That's one of the unique things when you deal with global Anglicanism is there's always the home diocese. Uh, when I meet a, a person, a Gafcon Archbishop, and I, well, I talked about, about politics and what's going on in the world, it's, uh, I got more important things back in the diocese. You know, that's where it's, the church is really happening. How is the church really happening in your diocese? Well, firstly, I think it's really important to underscore what you just said. Uh, if, if, if we move from the place where the local congregation is no longer the central place of our mission, we're in trouble. We're hearing that here at, um, uh, with Dr. Sam Ferguson, who's teaching out of Ephesians. Mm -hmm. We're hearing about the place of fellowship from Dr. Carl Truman that's here, uh, who's here. So um, I want to underscore that as well, that the vital place of the mission of the local church, the Anglican Church in North America's constitution speaks about this. Mm -hmm. And so that's so, so very vital. And it's happening here. Uh, we're 43 congregations, some larger, some small, some additional church plants, chaplaincies. In each of those contexts, the vision is to proclaim Christ, to share him, to worship him, the beauty of our Anglican tradition, uh, in order that we all know him as Savior, serve him as Lord in the fellowship of the local church. Mm -hmm. And we've heard some of those testimonies here at this convention, and it's just been fantastic. It seems that every time we get a, another convention together, another provincial uh, uh, convention like it's coming up in mm. June, the topics in, in society have changed a little bit. They're the same, but they're changed. There was no such thing as transgenderism right. in any form uh, or shape when the ACNA formed. Uh, it just was not on anybody's radar. Um, and right when you guys formed, we, we all of a sudden had the United States Supreme Court say that uh, homosexual marriage mm -hmm. is a right. Mm -hmm. It's constitutional. And those are big changes in a church that's saying, w w wait a minute, we don't believe that to be right. And we think that um, science and religion and philosophy and reason show that not to be. Um, is it always the role of the, the church to fight that or to proclaim Christ first? It's got to be to proclaim Christ first. And I, I said in my pastoral address to the Synod today that we are not the first generation mm -hmm. that's had to deal with a generation that is tone deaf to sin, mm -hmm. tone deaf to claims of absolute truth in Christ. I said earlier today that uh, our generation is uh, tolerant of everything except the intolerant claim mm -hmm. that Jesus Christ is the only way to God the Father. And so, we've, look, we've got to have good order. Uh, we've got to have um, uh, uh, good disciplinary processes. Those are all hugely important things, uh, both in our diocese and in the province. We're about to make some canonical reforms. That's good and it's necessary. Um, but those things cannot take the place of the proclamation of God's word and the right administration of the sacraments of the gospel. And uh, Anglicanism, Anglicanism helps us do that. If you go back to uh, our reformers, uh, that's what Cramner gives us. He gives us the proclamation of the gospel and the right administration of the sacraments. He does. He gives it form and function. And in, in as such, we now find ourselves as a, a mature ACNA. You know, we've mm. survived the 10 and up to you know, 15 years <laughs> here now. Thank uh, God. <laughs> 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 Just, I have to be on the other side of the rumor. Well, is that a rumor? It must be a rumor because it, it's not over no, yet. No, we're there. We're still going. <laughs> <laughs> so, in as such, there's still topics that mm. the ACNA uh, deals with from time to time that are still in the background. Uh, oftentimes, um, uh, Anglican and Scripted George and I talk about mm -hmm. the elephant in the room, the, mm -hmm. the women's orders mm -hmm. issues. Um, is that something you see 
further discussion or development on in the ACNA uh, 5, 10, or 15 years down the road? Or is that kind of a dead topic now? Well, the, the Constitution of the Anglican Church in North America allows that matter to be the, the matter of women in holy orders mm. to be resolved at the diocesan level. Mm. That's what the current Constitution says. So it would be quite a, quite a, a process to change that Constitution. And yet, uh, I believe that uh, the bishops of the province um, are called to lead through their service and there is such significant wrestle about this on both sides of the equation that the bishops have got some more work to do, mm. I believe. And so how will we do that? We, we need to do that firstly by listening to each other, finding out where each other is at over this issue, listening very carefully uh, to God the Holy Spirit through his word, and, and asking ourselves, do we need to make an adjustment? Um, we can't make it as ourselves as bishops. The church is conciliar. So it would be the, the bishops, clergy, and lay people of the church that need to make any change like that together. The bishops uh, can't do it on their own, but they can't speak. And, and uh, I'm one that feels that the, the bishops need to have some more conversation about this. Mm -hmm. There's other things that have appeared within the ACNA uh, in the last 15 years that nobody thought would have appeared. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, some bishops toward, uh, I don't want to say wokeness, but the, uh, that woke theology you know, introducing that in, into their diocese. And um, I wonder if that's being dealt with more behind closed doors, or is that something that we're gonna talk more about uh, to fetter it out now? I think we, what we must do is, in our attempts to speak to culture, mm -hmm. I was doing it today, in our attempts to speak to culture, we must remind ourselves as bishops, as Christians, that our foundation is firstly in the Word of God. Uh, we, are at not liberty, we are not at liberty to go beyond that, to change it, to alter it, uh, to run ahead of it, uh, to get behind it. And so um, where, where there are voices, we've got, we've got some people in the Anglican Church in North America who are very clever about speaking into culture. Mm -hmm. I love to listen to them. I'm not sure I always agree with them. But they're very clever. What I want us to do is have a public conversation about the foundation of our church being in the Word of God, in Christ crucified and risen, as, uh, as clearly exemplified in the formularies of our church, and ensure that remains our foundation. Mm -hmm. If we drift, we need to be brought back. I think that's true. I mean, some of the uh, people in uh, purple that drive me crazy the most have amazing talents and doing amazing things in the church. One of them is a wonderful church planter. You know, no matter what church he plants, it just poof. It's, okay, so theology is a little wimpy at some times, but what, what can you do? You know, well, we have to work with that together, don't we? We do, um, and, 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 and we have to work ensuring that we're listening well to one another, mm -hmm. but we're also having the courage to make the hard decisions. Earlier today, uh, I talked about Jackson Kemper, first sure. missionary bishop mm -hmm. in North America. In fact, missionary bishops were really unheard of until this point. And um, he had to make some courageous decisions about what was his priority. And for him, the priority wasn't so much listening to the culture. Uh, the culture of his day uh, was departing the faith. And that's why he was, that's why, that's why he would, he was consecrated. His goal was to proclaim Christ. Mm -hmm. And, and I'd, I'd want to take us all back to the foundational documents of the Anglican Church in North America as referenced in our Constitution, that we are about extending the kingdom of God by proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord, having people come to put their trust in him mm -hmm. so that they know him as Savior, serve him as Lord in the fellowship of the church. That's our mission. And Kevin, that's what will change culture. Mm -hmm. Christ is the one that will change the culture. That's why we must proclaim him. And, I, and I'm, I'm so thrilled, I said this today, I'm so thrilled to be part of an Anglican movement that has that as its mission statement. Now, Anglicanism globally mm. gets messy. You know, at the diocesan level, it's working okay. Uh, here in the ACNA, we're looking pretty good. Uh, we are GAFCA on forming, the Global South is doing great. But just, just beyond that, the people who look at Justin Welby and others as the leadership in the Anglican Communion are a little confused by what's mm. going on. 
Um, can, are we allowed enough voice now to, to say that's really not Anglicanism? We sure are, and I'll tell you why we're allowed enough voice. We're allowed enough voice because of what I just said. Proclaiming Christ, sharing Him, presenting Him, serving Him in the fellowship of the church according to what Christ has said to us in His Word. Mm -hmm. You go beyond Christ's Word, I believe you negate your ability to speak into that situation on behalf of the church. If you lay aside the formularies of the church, then you lay aside your ability to speak into the church. And tragically, that's what we've seen happen in North America. It's happening in Australia, New Zealand. It's happening in the United Kingdom and most of the West. It's not happening where Anglicanism is at its strongest mm -hmm. uh, with our global self brothers and sisters. And isn't it thrilling that the new Global Anglican Future Conference represents 85% of all Anglicans. Yeah. I mean, that's stunning. Yeah. That's stunning. And I believe the Lord's blessing and favor is upon that because we are upholding the word that he has entrusted to us. What has happened most in the ACNA, in my view, in the last eight, ten years, is bringing more solidifying what was brought together. We brought mm -hmm. together Kenya, Kenya yep. and all the different provinces who, who helped step in when uh, we needed that leadership so much. And now we finally see Nigeria stepping back. We see all the other provinces that helped us step back. And now we're left to fend for ourselves. And we're doing it. <laughs> I mean, that's but we're the, still not alone, Kevin. No. I'm, because we are part of the great global Anglican Future Conference. We all know it as GAFCON. I'm thrilled about GAFCON. I'm deeply committed to it. This diocese is a member diocese of GAFCON. Um, we've got uh, Paul Donison, Bishop Paul Donison with us at this, uh, this conference representing GAFCON. Um, it's, it's, it's really important to remember while we're moving on in the life of the Anglican Church in North America, we are not an island unto ourselves. Uh, our Archbishop serves on the Archbishop's Council, the Primate's Council of the Global Anglican Future Conference. We're part of this great Anglican, what can I call it, anthem mm -hmm. that's been raised up to the Lord. Um, and, and we saw that most recently when GAFCOM came together in Kigali, Rwanda. Sure. And I mean, man, wasn't it exciting? I couldn't make it, but George said it was... It was so, so <laughs> exciting. I yeah. came back from GAFCOM mm -hmm. in Rwanda so thankful to God for the present and future of the Anglican Church that was represented there. Now, one thing that was said to me uh, by another bishop in the ACNA is, it seems to me, the, at least at the, the bishop level, the Episcopal level, we're more conservative than we were uh, when we started. Um, look, I wasn't a bishop back in 2009, mm -hmm. but I was there at the founding of the Anglican Church in North America. I, th we, I think we were theologically conservative back then. Mm -hmm. We, you referenced it, we brought together a number of different entities mm -hmm. that had been individually expressed up until then with associations from various places. And over the last um, 15 years, we're really growing towards maturity where um, leadership is changing, uh, bishops are retiring, clergy, new clergy are being ordained. Um, are we more conservative? I, th I think we're faithful to the Word of God. And um, uh, being part of the Anglican Church in North America requires that. So, look, I, I'm exceptionally optimistic about the present and the future of Anglicanism in North America, given what God has done thus far in our shared life together. It doesn't mean, Kevin, and you know this because you see all of this going on, it doesn't mean that we're always agreeing. It doesn't mean that we haven't got some things. You know, we're in the teenage years. We are. Right? Yeah. My teenagers are now adults, thank mm. God. But I remember the teenage years. I and used to have Yeah, children, my wife yeah. and I traversed them. We got through them. But there were some challenges. And we do have, we've, we've referenced some of them already. Yeah. Um, we do have some challenges in our life together. But look, we're faithful to the Word of God. Christ is at our center. The church is growing. New churches are being planted. Um, this, this isn't happening everywhere in Western Anglicanism. No, is it? All right. Um, June's coming up. Mm. June is going to be a provincial meeting down in Latrobe uh, where they're going to have a conclave. 
uh, to choose the next uh, Archbishop of the Anglican Church in North America. A conclave, you know, means um, locking the door and throwing away the keys. <laughs> yeah, we, might the lock, we might lock the bishops <laughs> in and keep them there, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I remember the last conclave, and I was a reporter standing outside, and <laughs> on the last day, uh, a young man stumbled out. He came over to me and he goes, Kevin, they just made me Archbishop. <laughs> <laughs> White face, <laughs> scared. And I'm, I, he was not one of my first choices, mm. you know, as an outside observer, you know. But wow, mm. he knocked it out of the park. Mm. He did a great job as far as keeping uh, a young church able to grow in its maturity. Oh, we've made mistakes. There's been some, you know, Oops is here and there, but there's always that re-accountability. When we make a mistake, we'll admit it and we go further. And it's nice to see that, but now we have to put that same onus on another person. Um, are, are there discussions early on? Who would be a good choice? Well, look, here, here's how it is. We, we must trust God the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to raise up a man whom he is calling to serve the church for this next season. Um, ten years ago, it was Archbishop Foley, and we've got much to give thanks to him and his wife Alison for, yeah, and their absolutely. incredible sacrificial leadership over so. And 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 and, and, and what? I mean, we all know this, but we forget it. And bishops sometimes we forget it as well. So much happens that we don't see. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot different on the ground. A right? As a reporter, I yeah. see a lot. So, you know, he, I see the tired days. Yeah. I see the days. And, and so I, there's, to, there's, I there's much to be yeah. thankful. Yeah. What we've agreed as bishops is that um, uh, the way the conclave works is that the, the diocesan bishops are eligible for election, bishops of jurisdiction. There are 29 bishops. Mm -hmm. And, and we pray that God the Holy Spirit will raise up through our conversations, prayer. We do this in the context of worship, mm -hmm. gather together for Holy Communion. We trust that God the Holy Spirit will lead us. Uh, and that sometimes happens quickly. Uh, it sometimes happens um, a, little, a little bit more slowly. Mm -hmm. um, whatever the time frame, we've got days set aside to do this if we need it. Mm -hmm. And Archbishop Foley has called the church to prayer. Mm -hmm. And that I, I can't can't emphasize enough how thankful I am that people are praying for this process. Um, of, of those 29 bishops, um, uh, they're godly and good men. Mm -hmm. The church would be well served by them. The church is currently well served Absolutely. by them. Uh, uh, the, Lord will, the Lord will make it clear to us uh, when, we, when we come together, as he did with Archbishop Bob, as he then later did with Archbishop Foley. Mm -hmm. I want to thank you because this is such a different conversation than a reporter would have had with a Episcopal diocesan uh, <laughs> bishop 20 years ago, where the talk is, oh, well, we set money aside for new gardens, <laughs> or we've decided to send new mosquito nets to Haiti. Um, it, it's no, the first focus is Christ. And it will, if, God forbid it's not, but it will always be the first discussion. You know, he did not come to condemn, he came to save the world. And that's so relevant with your diocese and with the ACNA and with GAFCON. And it's, it's a wonder to see you. And I want to thank you for this opportunity before lunch uh, to, to <laughs> grab a quick uh, couple moments of anger Thank you. It's such a thrill to be with you. Remember what our mission is, mm -hmm. to proclaim the kingdom of God, to share it, to extend the kingdom so that people come to know God through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. serve him as Savior, trust him as Lord in the fellowship of the church, that's our business. That's what we're about as Anglicans in North America. We're not here to make Anglican or Ang authentic Anglicans. No, we're here to make. We're, we're here to follow <laughs> Christ as His disciples yes. in the tradition in which we find ourselves, so that we build this relationship with Christ that we have. I mean, it's. It, I'm getting excited. Now. Yeah, it's thrilling, right? Because yeah. Jesus is at the center. Yeah. Godspeed. God bless you. Too. Peace, brother. Peace.